Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of American Gothic. Really like this week's episode. It kind of continues, I mean, obviously picks up immediately after last week's episode. I like the kind of continuing theme of just like the families falling apart. It's like last episode, we had the family falling apart in the regard of like everyone's pointing fingers at everyone else. And in this episode, the family's falling apart because everyone else is like, oh, your family, your father was a killer. It's just like, oh, the Hawthorne name is completely screwed. So it's just kind of each one of them kind of dealing with it in our own way. We have Tess and Brady. Uh, Brady didn't outright completely apologize. He he kind of, to me, it wasn't a very sincere apology uh, to Tess about the whole Garrett situation. He's like, I was just trying to do the right thing. I kind of just jumped the gun, didn't let the evidence, you know, fully express itself. I kind of just ran with it. But um, basically seeing him and uh, Tess need to work on their trust issues, I'm like, yeah, you, you really do. You both... You both have been very untrusting lately, just, I don't know, it's, it seems like they're trying to get back to where they were, because it does bring up the underlying issues, it's like, if y'all were able to fall apart this easily because of this, maybe there was like, underlying issues to your relationship to begin with, but granted, I say that jokingly because it's like, oh, this is a very extreme circumstance, it will test any relationship, you know, especially being a cop and being caught up in the middle of a very a very big case like this, and plus it having a connection to your in-laws, so, who are essentially all your family now, so, so, but, I also like the whole thing about Tess, you know, the whole hot, uh, balloon, the hot air balloon story with her dad when she was 10 years old, and just kind of reminiscing a little bit, I was like, yeah, you're about to be pissed, aren't you, she's like, she grabs like a, um, glass uh, souvenir that they had gotten, kind of remembered a trip, and she smashes it, because it's just kind of like, exactly around the time of her 10th birthday, when they went on that hot air balloon ride, she's like, my dad was off killing his first victim, so it's just kind of like, I, I, it's understandable why you would feel the way you do. What I also appreciate the fact is that later on, she didn't throw it away, because there is a part of her that is trying to come to terms with it, but no matter what it is, he's still her dad. And, you know, it doesn't take away all the good moments they had, so she couldn't just throw it away. And I was I'm surprised we didn't actually see her trying to piece it back together, but it was kind of interesting. It's like, she was trying to throw it away, but she just couldn't. And we see her kind of unraveling a little bit in this episode, just because it seems like she, it has been brought up previously that she does have an anxiety disorder. So maybe that's what that is. Maybe like her anxiety is coming, it looked like she was having a panic attack, which that might have been, but it's just like she set an appointment and everything, it's just like... Because she hasn't been on her medication for a while because the whole point was like, hey, let's uh, try and uh, get pregnant because, you know, her medication would affect her pregnancy or whatever. Which, surprisingly enough, she did get pregnant this episode. We, she didn't find it out. But you do see a little bit of concern in her. And that was just because of Jack. It's like, Jack is as twisted and messed up as he is. What hope there is, is there for my, you know, child? Because, it, you know, because it was constantly referenced in this episode. It's kind of like... What's what's in our blood? Because the fact of the matter is, even Christina kind of threw it in Cam's face when he was trying to get her for Garrett. Because Garrett's like, oh, I want to see her. Ask Cam to go get her. She's like, your whole family's crazy. Stay away from me. It must be something in your blood. And the moment that happened, he and he saw the kid riding the bike. I immediately thought he was going to say something audibly or think something. But I was like, the moment you see the the moment she said, I was like, specifically Jack, because Jack's is disturbed, being as disturbed as he is, it's kind of like, I get where that's coming from, I thought, like, the moment he saw that kid on the bike, it was going to make him think of that, uh, it's just, when you look at what Jack did, it's just like, there's something wrong there, because, like, what he did to the twins, like, literally threw the bird, bear, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> literally threw the bear on the tarp, and then... Like, was like, no, go get it. The bear's floating, so obviously you'll be safe. It ended up, like, almost killing one of them because they could have drowned. But he didn't even ask, call for help or anything. He just stood there and just, like, I was making an experiment to see, like, how they would have, it would affect them. Because he saw something similar when Garrett was like, okay, let's get this out of your system. And just showed him uh, them doing an autopsy on, basically at the hospital, someone's doing an autopsy on... A recently dead person, and that got him thinking. It's just like the kid is really 
disturbed. And I and, and when you look at him I, and considering everything, you know, that Tess knows at the time, thinking like, oh, Jack's the way he is, plus my dad was a serial killer. So it's kind of like, you know, it, it might bring up questions of like, will she even tell Brady that she's pregnant? She'll probably just get rid of the pregnancy on her own. Or will she actually talk to him about it? I mean, they do have an open relationship. I mean, they have kind of gotten back to the point they do tell each other everything now, I guess. Uh, they're kind of past keeping secrets, but it's like, will she be like, I don't want to keep this baby because, you know, that's a worry. Like, what if our baby ends up like Jack? Like, you know, because she, she was legitimately going like, yo, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, you, you could have killed him. You could have called for help. You're doing it. But what is your problem? You know, all this on top of the fact is that she's dealing with her anxiety. You know, that's a lot to handle. I kind of quickly talked about him a little earlier, but let's go back to the fact is Cam. Cam was about to get high again just because everything was just, it was too much. And luckily, Tess showed up in time to get him. Basically, Jack had skipped school or whatever. And basically, it was something like that. I, I thought it was going to be something more severe. I thought like, oh, he was going to get picked on at school or something because of the whole like oh, your grandfather was a serial killer type of thing, or he did something very psychopathic. But it seemed, I'm pretty sure all she said was, like, he skips class and all that. But it showed him time. It stopped him from getting high. Sadly, you can see Sophie's over there already high. And it's just like, she is not even trying anymore. Like, like I said, it got past the point where she was pretending, like, oh, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to support you. It's like, literally at his dad's funeral, you were like, you need to feel this, so... I'm, you're not going to get high. You need to feel this. I ran away from uh, a similar situation. I'm not let you run away from it. Being there for him, but now it's like you're quickly letting him like kind of spiral out of control. Like I can't help but feel like it's because she herself is spiraling out of control. Like she kind of lives in that kind of a spiral. She wants him there with her because she, I guess, in her mind, she's like, I'm okay. Like there's nothing wrong with us being the way we are. We get a little high, you know. It makes us feel good. What's wrong with that, you know? Not really realizing the fact is it's affecting them and her child. It's like, we're over here getting high. Do you see what is wrong with our kid? I mean, let's not forget he brought that up to her. He's like, do you real, Do you look at Jack? You know, around the time she slept with that drug dealer. Which still, once again, hasn't been brought up, but um, I'll let it go. But she, he's basically like, do you see our kid? He's freaking weird. Something's, something's wrong with our kid. But she's kind of like, no, he's like you, he's artistic, that's all he, like, essentially kind of giving excuses to it, but it's kind of like, it makes you wonder, like, how, like, I don't know, we've never really seen her be a mother, you haven't even seen Cam really be a dad, per se, like, you haven't really seen them parenting, parenting, and you just seen them kind of around Jack, but you never see them being like, yeah, Cam has his moments where he's trying to parent, but it's like, I don't know, it don't seem like, not saying he has to give a give him a firm hand or something like that, like smack him across the face or something, nothing like that, but it's just kind of like, I don't know, we haven't really seen them kind of be parents, really, they're, they're more like, they almost look like teenagers that don't know what the hell they're doing, it's like, they kind of want to sit back and have fun, but it's like, oh, we got this little human being we're supposed to be taking care of, but the fact of the matter is, Cam was like, you know what, I gotta get my crap together, I'm gonna sign up to rehab, go back into rehab, and, you know, Tess is going to look after Jack. And Sophie's like, wait, what? What about me? I'm his mom. Let me look at it. It's like, you need to go to rehab, too. And she just got super pissed about it. And just like, because Tess was like, yeah, either give Jack to me or, or I'm going to go call child services on you. But so that I'm sure is not going to go too well. Like that was just kind of the last time we saw Sophie, but I don't think things are just going to be simple, especially because, you know, you have Tess saying like, yo, we need to get Jack some professional help. I know she must feel so bad because the fact of the matter is she's the one suggested taking in uh, Jack. And, you know, he almost killed one of her nieces. So it's kind of like, uh. I mean, I don't know. She might not have like, you know, suggested to take him, maybe that was Cam's suggestion, just because it's like, oh, out of everyone here, it's like, everyone else has their own responsibilities, you know, Tess has hers as well, but it's like, you know, you don't have other kids to look after, whereas Allison has kids to look after, but at the same time, it's kind of like, maybe it's just because he didn't want to ask Allison, you know, I feel like, it seems like out of any siblings, every sibling, it kind of has their problems with each other, but it seems like everyone's okay with Tess, I guess because she's the baby of the family, I guess, I don't know. I guess I can understand that a little bit, being the baby of my family, too. I'm not going to go there. 
But uh, it's just it's kind of got to suck. It's like you were kind of responsible for him, and he nearly killed one of your nieces. It's like something's really wrong with it. Especially when you got the doll, that uh, bear from Garrett, and he starts strangling it, strangling it in the hospital, and he left that message on it because you can record things on it and testing them accidentally stepping on it. That cements it more in her mind. Like, yeah, I can't, I can't have a kid. This is this is crazy. But I'm spending so much time on that. I also have to focus on the uh, aspect of Garrett. Like, from the very beginning, the moment Garrett was like, yeah, I didn't tell you about Dad. I saw some things. That's what led to the argument. And I told him I would out him if he didn't stop the kill. If I hear anything about killings, I'd come back and out him. But, for, you know, no killings happened afterwards. So he's like, in my mind, it's cemented. Yeah, Dad was a killer. Tess is like, why didn't you tell anybody? Tell us. It's like, I didn't have any proof, you know. I mean, he ends up telling her later on he thought he was doing the right thing for everybody. But, like, the moment he was saying that, the entire conversation, he's kind of constantly looking back at his mom, and his mom kind of giving an eye back. I was like, you're lying, aren't you? And she's like, I, I, was, I was worried about what you would say. And it's just like, oh, my God. So it's kind of up the debate. Like, you know, you know, at that moment, I already knew it. Like, I already knew ahead of time. I was like, Mitchell being the killer, like, that's too easy. It's like, we're, we're still not nearing the end. If we're nearing the end, it's kind of like, okay, I can, I think we won't find out until the very final episode that's like, oh. Blank is the killer. It's not, it, for every till then it's gonna be constant red herrings. So I already expected that, but I did like the twist of like finding out like because you got Brady and Cutter working together, which it's always interesting to see that dynamic because they started off not liking each other because Cutter didn't trust him and didn't think he was a well seasoned enough uh, cop to you know take a case like this. But they're working together. I liked it. She was like, "I'll be your, you know, I'll be your scully to your molder," you know. Which is very interesting considering the fact that she has red hair too. But I love the fact is that, you know, Brady is the one like, yo, something suspicious here. He took what Tess told him about the hot air balloon and he pieced it together. He's like, there's no way Mitchell could have made it, you know, done all that, you know, that day. Because it's like, there was just no time for him to do all that by himself. They ended up uh, running uh, running some tests of it, and I love the guy that's currently living there. Kind of, he's kind of like, I kind of consider myself kind of a crime aficionado. Like, I kind of like crime mysteries. That's why I bought this uh, house. He's like, but I come, consider myself kind of a SBK aficionado, but they ran through it. I love the fact this cutter was tied up, and, you know, Brady, you know, running through it, and she's like, you forgot to clean uh, the fingerprints, and he came, but he's like, it's like, shut up, you're supposed to be dead. But um, they ended up figuring out like that basically a neighbor from across the street. There was kind of constant break-ins. They called him the feng shui uh, thief or something like that. Basically, they didn't steal anything, but will constantly arrange the furniture in weird uh, patterns, like turn things ever slightly, and they piece it together. It's like that's because SBK was actually aiming for another person first. They were trying to, you know, because they're meticulous, they try to set everything up, but it's like, oh, wait, they got interrupted by a dog, so that kind of fell through. So uh, they ended up looking through some tapes and ended up finding out, you know, based on the way, uh, just from what they got of the camera angle, because it was basically a gnome that had footage of uh, that was pointed towards the house that uh, SBK went to. Basically, based on, like, the way the car shook and the way the car immediately took off, it's like, oh, SBK isn't just one person. There's two people. Which, in itself, opens up an entire door being like, it could literally be anyone. Now, I'm still throwing taking Garrett off the board. I'm kind of possibly throwing Tess on the board. Yes, they argue, it's like, oh, she was young at the time, but it's like, I don't know. If she's working with somebody, she could have easily done it. Say, for example, it is Mitchell. He could have been training her into being a killer. Maybe that has something to do with her anxiety. You know, maybe that's all like a, a fake out. It's like, oh, you over here thinking she's the quiet, you know, sister that... The anxiety, like, what if she actually doesn't have any memories of it because of her anxiety attacks? Maybe she kind of, like, maybe the trauma all of it all, or maybe maybe she kind of has, I'm throwing out something possibly, what if she has, like, a split personality that, like, anytime her anxiety attacks get too bad, like, she switches her to kind of a different persona, and that persona's the one that's been killing, but she doesn't even realize it. And, you know, because I feel like the big secret you know, it would make sense if it was Tess because Garrett wants to protect her out of anybody else. He wanted to protect the family, sure. You know, Allison, sure, Cam, sure, but I feel like out of anyone, Tess because he dotes over her the most. So I don't know. 
maybe, I don't know, like I said, she was super young at the time because they brought that up. It's like, yeah, but I'm thinking maybe that's why they brought that up because it's like, oh, they completely removed that as a possibility even though it is, it's still possible if she is working with someone else because she could be a killer in training or something like that. Maybe she had help with some of the crimes. I don't know, like I said, just throwing it out there. I mean, really the most suspicious person is freaking Madeline. Especially because the fact is, Garrett found out, he's like, he, he figured out, he's like, I want to tell the truth, because the whole Christina thing, like, she finally showed up, he's like, you know, what we had was real, I just, you know, I've talked, I, I, uh, guessed as much, as the fact is, he just wanted to make sure she was okay, to see how much, you know, what happened to her affected her, just to make sure she had a good life, but he ended up falling for her. So things got complicated. But everything's between us is real. He basically wants to kind of stay with her. He cares about her. And she's like, but is that everything? He's like, yeah. But then like, you know, the monitor started beeping, and she's like, you're you're lying because you kind of your heartbeat kind of goes up uh, ever so slightly. So like, you have one more chance to tell me the truth, but he can't. And he kind of brings it up to Madeline later, and and that's when he ends up finding out. Oh, you killed dad to keep the truth. He's like, mom. And then she's kind of teary eyed, but then she quickly pulls it back and turns a little cold. She's like, okay. You want to tell them? Go ahead, tell, tell, tell the truth. But the reason is, the only reason why you want to tell the truth is because you want to get her. The fact of the matter is, there's no way of that happening because you're connected by murder. Let's not forget the fact that she stabbed you too. So it's not the most, isn't the basis of a good romance uh, story. And basically being like, you, at the end of it all, when it's all said and done, you telling the truth, all it's going to do is push her away anyway, plus destroy this family. So, is that what you want to do? Basically, guilting him into not telling anything, saying anything. That's kind of the whole point this entire time has always been to guilt him. So, I don't know. I feel like, but because of that, I threw out the test theory, but it's kind of like, maybe it's not test now. I'm, th I'm sitting here thinking about it. It's like, if, he, if it were test, I feel like he'd be more inclined to lie. I don't know. I just feel like that whole anxiety thing is going to turn into something. Maybe it's supposed to signify something that's – maybe it's kind of a long play. It's like, oh, we introduced the fact she has anxiety now, you know, at the, earlier in the season. And now it's like, oh, it's going to play out, you know, here and there. Like, it's going to have its moments. So, I don't know. It's just what is so secretive? Like, what – what is it? It's it's gnawing at me. I, I want to find out, hurry up and find out who the killer is. Like it says, currently Mitchell's up there on the chopping block because of like the blood on his jersey match, the blood on the belt. So maybe Mitchell is one of the killers. I don't know. Like I said, he could have easily been helping cover up the crime, you know, because that's what he was always like telling the truth. Maybe he was kind of a reluctant partner. I don't I want to say it might be Madeline, but it could, I don't know. It don't seem like she is a killer. It seems like she's just, she's covering up in this aspect. I think at the end of the day, that's what their crimes are. They covered up stuff. So maybe it's one of them. Maybe it's both of them. Maybe it's neither of them. And maybe it's like two of the siblings. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't even hazard, <laughs> I guess, as to who it might be. I don't know. Like, I feel like it could easily be Allison. Like, she's got a lot of, like, you know, she's the one that you really don't know. It's like, you wouldn't look at Allison and think, oh, she's a killer. It's like, I don't know. I guess because of all the crap in her life, it just wouldn't make you think so. But it's like, I don't know. And, you know, since I am talking about Allison, let's talk about her story this episode. It's like, oh, I'm basically going to have to back down from the election. Then at the same time, she also has to deal with the fact is of Tom and Naomi. It's like, yo, you have to pick one of us. Time to choose. Tom is basically saying, like, you have to end a relationship because Naomi, it's not just fun anymore. It's like, oh, you want to sleep with someone else? Yes. Okay. But we need to come together because the wool, the lions are closing in. Essentially, they've lost a lot of business opportunities because of the whole, like, oh, your dad is SBK. And then at the same time, like, you know, her, you know, having to deal with that as, like, a running, you know, in the election as mayor. Because he even had, like, a poll kind of done, like, the guy kind of doing the analytic analytics behind it basically took a poll and basically people are like yeah your dad being a serial killer yes it's better than you being a serial killer but it's not better than bestiality so he was basically like so you're saying the current mayor could uh literally sleep with his dog and he still have a better chance of winning than me and she's like he's basically like yeah the numbers kind of agree with that so but um 
So they wanted a united front, but he was also like, plus, she said, I love you. She's like, I, I never texted that to her. I've never said that to her. He's like, no, she said it to you. I deleted the text. Well, so I'm surprised she didn't throw up the fact is you went through my phone, but it's kind of like, she was just kind of like, mm. I think part of her wasn't quite sure things would get that serious, I think. Like, I think it almost seemed like there was a part of her that was a little happy to know that that's how Naomi felt. But at the same time, it hurt because it's like, oh, like, who do you choose? Personally, I don't know. It seems like she might have been more in love with Naomi than she was Tom. But, you know, with the way the episode ends, it's like, nope, I picked Tom. I can't, you know, abandon my family, you know, just to win this election. Even if the things go bad with this election, I can't, you know, walk away. I can't go win and lose my family. If I lose, as long as I keep my family, it's okay. Basically, to add, saying Naomi's going to have to resign. And Naomi's like, okay. She basically, I don't know, it was almost the act of like paying her off, being like, okay, I got you a new job set up, you know, gave you a glowing recommendation. So you, the job's yours if you want it. So, you know, it's a possible route to go. And Naomi's like, okay, I'll resign. And she walks away and it's kind of like, oh, like you feel bad for her. She is heartbroken, which in itself is kind of like, okay, so how is this going to come back to screw Allison over? I just, she might be a very jaded lover in up trying to screw Allison over we don't you know because talking about that we also had Tom having I guess he's never really had an affair before like I don't think he's had his fun like he's never it's not come up we know about Allison's but not his because we ended up seeing him sleeping with that um, reporter person named Jennifer side note this kind of a thing is that the actress who plays Potter from um what is it Killjoys that looks like it could be her. Maybe it's her, maybe it's not. Maybe someone who looks exactly a lot like her. But that looked like it might be her. I'm not sure. But, um, so they kind of hooked up. They were a little flirtatious earlier in the episode. Um, but the whole, like, thing about Allison running, she decided to go through it after her mom, like, bitch slapped her. And was like, no. You don't, you have all these opportunities you have in front of you. At all these opportunities at your fingertips. And you know why you have them? It's because of me. After everything I've sacrificed for you. Do not screw this up for you. Especially do not screw this up for me after everything I've done for you. There's hurdle. If there's hurdles in your way, you got to jump over them or go around them. But you don't let them block your path. So that kind of instilled Allison. And she brought up many valid points. She basically compared herself to... I forgot his name, but it's John Wilkes Booth's brother. You know, it's like John Wilkes Booth killed uh, Abraham Lincoln, but it's like, should his brother have to suffer the ramifications for that? Like, that was my his brother's decision. Like, anything he does shouldn't be affected by that. And she's like, the same thing for me. My dad was a killer. I, I'm sorry. My sympathy, my heart goes out to all, like, his victims' families, but that was him. That wasn't me. If I had the chance, I'd go back, and I wish I could change things and expose my father, but that's, that's you know, I can't do that. All I can do is push forward. So, you can't, you know, make a child suffer for the sins of their, their parents, so. Which was a good argument, so. I don't know. Very, very interesting developments, and I just don't, don't know where it's going to come from. Like we still got a, a few episodes left this season. I think it's, I think this is a thirteen episode series. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely thirteen. I remember because it it's thirteen parts. So still a lot of room for a lot of stuff to kind of get revealed. I don't know, man. I feel bad for Garrett. He is in that position because I want to know what is so bad that he's been hiding it for like the past fourteen years. Like, what is his reasoning for hiding it, and what is the big secret? Like. They, like I said, they know exactly who SBK is, but it's like, why won't you say anything? Well, I mean, granted, now we know SBK is more than one person, so it's just, oh, there's so many questions. You get some stuff answered, and then it's just kind of like, oh, more questions pop up. But I guess that's kind of, that's part of the beast when it comes to, you know, murder mysteries like this. So. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.